Welcome back to Enlightenment Online. I'd like to talk with you about enlightenment and suffering. In the mid-1970s, I traveled to Europe, uh, specifically to Greece, and I had an accident there um, at the Oracle of Delphi, as a matter of fact, and found myself marooned and laid up in Athens for several weeks. I was doing a lot of Zen meditation at that time, and I had had a number of Satori experiences and was getting very deep insight into myself and the way the world worked, or at least I thought that was true. Every day I'd go down to the Plataea Syntagma, Constitution Square, and I would sit in a cafe and I'd have tea and uh, write, and I would look at all the people around me, feeling uh, very compassionate for them because they were continuing to suffer, while I, who had had these fantastic Satori experiences, uh, was finished with suffering in, in this life. Uh, how I put up with myself, I really don't know, uh, but I, I managed to. Uh, the point of this story is not just about the pitfalls of pride, which uh, was certainly evident in my reaction, but in the fact that I firmly believed that there was a place or a condition called enlightenment which was going to save me from suffering. After all, I, all the Zen masters uh, that I had had contact with or saw pictures of always had a kind of peaceful smile playing around their lips, and it didn't seem to me that they were suffering the way I was suffering. Um, so, it leads me to this. What keeps us from enlightenment is not what we do not know. It's what we think we know that keeps us from enlightenment. In other words, our concepts, our conditioned thinking, our prior ideas, our closely held knowledge is what keeps us from seeing reality as it is. And seeing reality as it is is what enlightenment is about. One of the concepts that I had in my thinking, in my conditioned thinking, was that awakening was somehow going to nullify suffering. And it was going to uh, exempt me from the suffering that's universal to all beings. The Buddha said, life is suffering. He didn't say life is suffering, and if you follow the rest of these steps, you'll find out that life is not suffering. That was the foundational condition that you needed to accept and understand in order to go further. So he was not talking about deliverance from suffering by separating ourselves from suffering, but insight into suffering. So life is suffering is a simple statement of fact. We're born, we live, and we die, and in between we often suffer from loneliness, from war, from famine, from relationships, from just the existence of death itself uh, makes us suffer. Deliverance comes from how we relate to that suffering. So my advice to you is not to get caught in any airy ideas about becoming free of suffering. The spiritual path consists of being able to walk into your own suffering with an open heart and a clear mind, to realize that all beings are suffering and that it's possible for us, even in that condition, to help the suffering of other beings in this world. This will actually bring you joy in the end and probably will bring you joy in the beginning as well. If you're after enlightenment, in other words, don't let concepts keep you down. Enlightenment includes suffering. Human life includes suffering, and real suffering is no impediment to joy or awakening. Finally, there's a very practical side to all of this. If enlightenment truly nullified suffering or released you from suffering entirely, it would create two classes of people, those who suffered and those who did not. But the whole point of being a Buddha is that you become entirely and completely human, which means you are prey to all the same difficulties that every being has. We're no longer separate 
from anything, from other people, from the universe at large, and from our own darkest corners. That's the point of being a Buddha. It's this ability to surrender completely to the human condition that conquers suffering's ability to separate us from life. That's the important point. When we are really, really human, uh, accepting and opening up to all of our humanity, we can be of real use. And that's the point of enlightenment.